Embarking on the journey of homeownership can be an exciting and significant milestone in anyone's life. However, it can also be a complex process that requires careful consideration and preparation. This comprehensive video aims to provide a detailed overview of the eight essential steps involved in buying a house. This video seeks to offer valuable insights and guidance to prospective home buyers in understanding the intricacies of the home buying process. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Aaliyah M. Clark. I am a North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and Georgia real estate professional. If you guys are new here, welcome to the channel. If you guys are returning, thank you guys for all the support. Let's go ahead and hop into the eight steps of the home buying process. So for step one, first thing that we need to do is assess your financial readiness. Before diving into the process of buying a house, it is crucial to assess one's financial readiness. This step involves evaluating personal finances, determining the feasible budget, and obtaining pre-approval for a mortgage loan if needed. If you don't need a mortgage loan, more than likely you're gonna be paying with cash, but most first time home buyers, unless you're just like swimming in a whole bunch of money, more than likely you're gonna be using a mortgage, usually like 30 year, uh, that's like a standard. By understanding one's financial standings, individuals can accurately determine their purchasing power and establish realistic expectations. So one thing that I really want you guys to ensure that you are paying attention to is your financial situation. If you don't have a pre-approval, there is no way that we're going to know how much you can actually afford. So that needs to be the first step before we do anything. We have to get a pre-approval. If you guys need assistance with finding a, a loan officer, let me know. I have a couple that I work with that will be more than happy to help you out to see what you can afford. You don't want to go shopping for homes or looking at these homes and you're getting your hopes up all high and then when you go to get the approval you're only approved for 200,000 or 300,000 or 400,000. If you're looking at a million dollar home and you're only approved for 900,000 then you got to come up with the the extra 100,000. You know what I mean? The majority of people do not have that type of money just laying around, you know. So I really want you guys to pay attention to that first step because that is crucial. I have had buyers that, you know, are so excited to they start planning out like, "Yeah, like I can see myself here I can see myself there and unfortunately I have to burst their bubble and let them know like well we have to get a pre-approval you know what I mean like you might like this home on Zillow or you might like this home that you you know you've seen but we don't know if you can afford it yet so that step I, I'm sorry I harped on it a little bit but that is probably the most essential step in the entire process step after getting your finances together and figuring out the pre-approval and all that good stuff we need to go to step two which is outlining needs and preferences so before you go looking at homes and after you get your pre-approval think about what do I really need, right? So identifying specific housing needs and preferences is essential in narrowing down the home search for the perfect house, considering factors such as the location, size, layout, amenities, and proximity to schools and services is crucial in shaping the criteria of a suitable home. As much as I want to help you guys buy a home and find the perfect home for you, I want to really make sure that we are making the best possible investment decision that we can. So if you can save a little bit of money per room, then I'm going to suggest go ahead and go for that three bedroom. Go ahead and go for that four bedroom. If you don't need all this extra space, then what are your goals long term? So by outlining your housing needs and preferences, you know, that's that's the next step that we're going to take. You don't want to spend all of this time looking at homes that you know that you're not going to like. You know that, you know, it might be too small for you. Maybe you have like a larger family or maybe you have like some uses that you see in the, the future for the home. So if you have, you know, specific preferences as far as the size goes, then we need to start there and look at the homes that meet your criteria we don't want to just be going go look at homes because like we're not in the business of window shopping we're trying to get you a home we're trying to get you the home that you like so i just had a client for example they were gonna make an offer on a home and i knew you know this home is it's a little bit small you know what i mean like i don't necessarily feel like they're gonna be happy with it and i did ask them hey like what do you guys how do you guys feel about you know the size of the home and they were like well it's just us you know we uh really don't need anything big and then i get home getting ready to write the offer for the purchase of or to make an offer for the that house that we saw and they ended up not wanting to make the offer because they they thought it over and was like yeah I mean we really want something a little bit bigger and I completely understood you know what I mean like we have to get you guys what you want and what you need so that leads me to step three which is engage a real estate agent or a real estate professional such as myself so you guys have already taken like the third step by watching this video if you guys 
me, my assistance. Like I said, I am here. My contact information will be down below. So you can always don't hesitate to reach out to me. Even if I don't cover the state that you're in, I will be more than happy to help you locate an agent that, you know, we can trust and that has your best interest at heart. But you're going to have to go ahead and find you a real estate agent unless you are just going to like approach the owner and try to like get them to, you know, sell it to you themselves or try to, you know, submit the offer yourself. But I would really go ahead and, and engage with a real estate professional because you don't want to overpay. You need somebody to negotiate on behalf of you that has your best interest in, in, in heart. You know, if you are making these offers on your own, more than likely you're going to be moving with emotion and not necessarily like based off of the numbers and really making wise decisions based off of how the market is moving. A real estate professional can give you a bunch of insight on that home, that area, how much homes are going for, whether you're going to be overpaying or whether you need to ask for repairs, certain things like that. You want to make sure that you're making the best possible negotiations before you pretty much go all in on, you know, buying this home, you know, based off of what the seller is saying. The seller is going to tell you whatever in order to buy the home. So we, you know, you got to find someone that has, that's an advocate for you. So one of the most significant steps in the home buying process is engaging with a qualified real estate agent. These experts possess invaluable knowledge of the local market, as I said earlier, understanding legal and contractual matters, and they can provide guidance throughout the entire Entire process from home hunting to closing the deal. So these people are very important. You know, I know what my job is, you know, for you guys, and that's to get you guys to the closing table with, you know, the most money in your pocket and with a with some keys in your hand when you leave that closing table. Like I said, go ahead and reach out to me if you need some help. Leave a comment down below if you, you know, you want to just ask me a quick question. I got you, I promise. So for step four, we need to start searching for the perfect home. Once armed with the assistance of a real estate agent, prospective home buyers can now embark on the exciting journey of house hunting. So this is probably like my favorite part, honestly, going to go look at the homes, trying to see, you know, yeah, I could see this, you know, being here or, you know, you might go into a home that's completely and totally crazy. Like I'm going to tell you guys a story after like I finish like this little segment, but you might, you know, <laughs> for this step, it involves touring various properties, attending open houses and utilizing online resources to explore potential options. It is essential to keep an open mind and optimizing needs over once when evaluating different properties. So like I said, I have like this crazy story. It actually just happened this weekend. I was showing a house and, you know, I w originally me and my clients, we were not supposed to be going to go see um, more than one home. We had, you know, our eyes set on one, but they saw one that had just hit the market. So we went over there and we saw it was a go and show, which is like, you know, you can just go ahead and go, go see it. You don't have to book an appointment. We get there and I'm typing in like the code and stuff so we can, you know, get into the house. And I smell this like overwhelming, like potent smell of mothballs. And I'm kind of like, just like, getting taken aback a little bit just because like <laughs> It was so strong, guys. The smell was so strong. Like, I could smell it before I even opened the door. Now, if you guys, I'm from the country, okay? I'm from, I'm originally from Louisa County, Virginia. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not from, like, a city or anything like that. I'm from a small town with, like, a, at the max three stoplights. So, I don't know how they do it in other places, but I've never seen anybody use mothballs inside the home. It's always been on the outside. Like, maybe people will put mothballs, like, around the house in order to keep snakes away. But when we opened the door for this home... There was mothballs everywhere. Do you guys hear me? Like everywhere everywhere like literally everywhere guys and i wish i was exaggerating but like <laughs> i'm not okay so we ended up going into the house and like i said there was mothballs all over the place they were like near the vents and you know um just in every single room they had like a pile of mothballs so we are walking through the house and they have a small child she's probably you know maybe like two three you know at the max you know she's no older than that and i was like afraid for her because i'm like these i'm you know i'm i'm an adult obviously <laughs> and they were the the smell was so overwhelming that it was making me a little bit nauseous. So I can only imagine how her little nose was feeling. So like I suggested to her mother, like, hey, I think she should probably take her out um, just because of how strong the smell is. So me and the husband, we proceeded to walk around the home and we go into the garage and there is a like, that's where like the sewage or like, I don't even know what it would be called because I've never seen anything like that before. But like basically the system that, you know, pumps out the, you know, the nasty stuff, the human stuff, right? It was 
exposed. So I think that is the reason why the mothballs were all over the place because they were trying to mask the smell. When we went into the garage, I started gagging like almost immediately. Okay. I ended up having to leave the husband in there because like I just could not take it. My, I, it was too, too much. But anyway, um, that is it, still my favorite part of the home buying process, looking at homes because that, that has been the only time that I've experienced anything like that. So please don't make this like, don't let that discourage you. But I did want to share it with you. Like the home buying process has its ups and downs. And like, honestly, you never know what's going to happen. So that was just an interesting story that I wanted to share with you guys. So step number five, making an offer and negotiating. After identifying the ideal property, the next step is to make an official offer. This step may involve thorough research of the comparable property prices, strategically determining an offer amount and negotiating with the seller and seller's agent. Skill negotiation can play a significant role in securing a fair deal that aligns with the buyer's interest. So this is where that agent comes in, where I come in. You need someone that is going to negotiate for you, okay? Low the prices or how, I, I don't care what the seller's reason for pricing the property where it is, you need to have an agent that is going to fight for you, that is going to negotiate for you. At the end of the day, as a realtor, not all real estate agents are realtors, but all realtors are real estate agents. As a realtor, we are held to a standard and that is to have your best interest at heart, right? So yes, we do make a commission off the deal. However, that is not, that should not be at the forefront of, you know, their mind or of, at my mind, you know what I mean? Because we have a, a duty to you all. You know, it's probably hard to believe, but you should go into like, like realtor ethics and things of that nature in order to really understand the standards that we are, are to uphold just by, you know, being there for our people and making sure that they were doing the best possible thing for them. Now, if I, say for instance, you had an agent that was like every single offer that they made, they just went in at list price or they suggested that you offer more than what that home is worth knowing that it's you're offering too much. That realtor may not have your best interest at heart. You know what I mean? They might be wanting you to pay more just because, just because, you know, their commission is going to be higher. Now, a good agent is going to go look up the comparables and they're going to be honest with you. Hey, this is what I saw. This is, this is what I have noticed. These are the trends. These, this, the other homes that are the, around the same size, same bedroom, same bathroom. Th that's what they're going for. This is the same age. You need an agent that's going to do the research, not base it off of what's going to hit their pocket after the deal closes, if it closes. Because if you're using, if you're using the FHA loan or if you're using some type of government back loan and the uh, appraisal comes in and it comes in lower than what you offer, okay, now we got to go back to the negotiating table because the home is not worth what you offer. So it's, it's a bunch of different things in there and I know it was a lot, but that's step number five, basically making an offer and negotiating. So let's go ahead and get to step number six. After you get uh, your offer accepted, we need to do a home inspection. So that's step number six. To ensure the property's quality and condition align with expectation, it is essential to conduct a professional home inspection. This step involves engaging a certified inspector who will thoroughly assess the property's structural integrity, electrical systems, plumbing, and other crucial components. This inspection report can help the buyer make an informed decision in potential negotiating repairs or financial adjustments if necessary. So usually, especially here in North Carolina, this, that's where I'm located. While I am licensed in Virginia, South Carolina, and Georgia, I am I'm, I'm located in North Carolina. We have, well, every state has this. I don't even know why I even decided to bring up like the, the states or whatever. But you have a due diligence period, right? Your realtor should have negotiated a due diligence period for you. So, you know, I usually do like maybe like 14 days, depending on what type of property it is, whether if it's, if it's land, we're going to do a little bit longer because, you know, we have to make sure that it's, you know, capable of being built on and different things like that. But usually, you know, if it's already um, stick built or if it's uh, on like it's already a uh, home in place, what we're usually going to do is like 14 days. And during that time, that's when you're going to engage with a, a you're going to get an inspection done. So an inspector, their job is to be picky for you, right? They're literally going to look at every single little thing that looks off and they're going to put it on their report. They're going to send it back to me and you and we're going to look at it and we're going to be like, okay, what you what, like, what you think? You know what I mean? Do you want this stuff fixed or do you want to, you know what I mean? Like you're okay with that being, you know, you know, it's probably not that big of a deal to you or whatever. Um, yeah, maybe the roof might be caving in a little bit or there might be a wet spot on the roof and we, we didn't know about, it, you know, or the inspection report has revealed that. We probably want to go ahead and tell, talk to the sellers about that because th that's going to be a lot of money. You know what I mean? So I don't want you spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars at the end after closing and the seller has ran off into the sunset with, your, with, with the money. You feel me? So we're going to get an inspection done every single time, every single time. All right. So some, um, some 
sometimes they'll like sell a home as is. I haven't sold a home as is yet. So, you know, I would have to, you know, do a little bit of, you know, uh, talking with some of my mentors that have. But yeah, um, just be be cognizant that if you pick me as your realtor, we're going to get an, uh, an inspection done. OK, I don't I don't want y'all to come to me and be like, yeah, Leah, the um, the pipes burst. Uh, they they the house is flooding. What we going to do? You know what I mean? Because I'm going to panic. Then y'all y'all going to panic or y'all going to panic. And then I'm going to panic. And we don't we don't get time for that. You feel me? I want y'all to be happy with your home and be safe with your home. So we're going to get an inspection. I know that was a little rant, but yeah, let's go ahead and go to step number seven. <laughs> OK, so we already talked about um, getting your pre-approval done. But just because you got a pre-approval done, that doesn't mean that you're necessarily like financed completely. Right. So for step number seven, we're going to obtain financing. Once an offer is accepted, the property inspection is satisfactory. Obtaining financing becomes imperative, right? This step typically involves finalizing the mortgage loan application, gathering necessary documentation, and working closely with the lender to secure favorable terms and interest rates. So look, let me tell y'all something, all right? If you get a good rate that you are comfortable with, tell your lender that you're ready to lock in. Tell your lender that you're ready to lock in because your rate could either go up, it could go down, but it could go up as well. Well, so go ahead and, and once you're at a comfortable rate, go ahead and lock it in. So proper research and due diligence in this step can lead to significant long-term financial benefits. So the high, you guys, I don't, I'm talking about this as if you guys have never purchased a home. You have, you have no idea about purchasing a home at all, right? So once you know what your potential interest rate could be and you haven't locked in a rate yet, just understand that your rate is going to be how much you're going to pay in the long term, right? So there was a home that I sold or that I assisted in selling for I was the buyer's agent my buyers had obtained a mortgage that was around I think it was like seven percent right and the home sold for maybe it was like three three fifty or two fifty I think it was three three hundred and fifty thousand I think and over the long term I think that they like if they were to go to the 30 year more if they were gonna you know pay it off like the or go if they were gonna use the entirety of the 30 year mortgage and pay it off they would pay nearly like nine hundred thousand dollars and that's crazy okay <laughs> So, but interest, your interest is the amount of, that's like, that's the cost of doing, of, of buying a house. That's the cost of borrowing the money or borrowing the money so that you can purchase the house. So most people, usually they'll probably go ahead and sell it before that 30 years is up. But just keep in mind that if you do decide to, you know, this is your dream home, then yeah, your, the interest rate is going to, that's, that's the interest that is applied onto, you know, whatever it is that you'd agree to purchase the home at or whatever price you agreed to purchase the home at. You can can refinance later but that's a whole nother topic i promise i'll post a video about that later on so that, you know just more you know financially literate um within this topic but yeah it does it's gonna have its financial benefits if you can get a lower rate obviously okay so for step number eight is closing the deal the final step in purchasing a home is closing the process this stage involves a series of legal and financial procedures such as reviewing and signing numerous documents paying closing calls and transferring ownership it is essential to engage with legal representation carefully review all documents documentation and ensure that all obligations and contingencies are adequately met before officially closing the deal. So in North Carolina here, we have attorneys do our closing. So you are already be like, you know, working with a legal professional anyway, if you're here in North Carolina. So, you know, that, that should make it a little bit easier. Usually they're going to be like the holder of escrow and, you know, do be the closing attorney being said, the process of buying a house may seem overwhelming at first glance, but by breaking it down into small, manageable steps, prospective buyers can navigate the journey with confidence. The eight steps outlined in this video offer a comprehensive overview of the essential considerations and actions involved in purchasing a house. By understanding the complexities of these steps and seeking guidance from experts, individuals can embark on their home ownership journey with a clear vision and a higher chance of finding a perfect home. So thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate each and every single one of you. If you guys, you know, enjoyed this video, if it was helpful for you guys, please make sure you guys go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to this video or subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate each and every single one of you. Like I said, um, I'm going to be posting another video for this series. So this series is meant to help first time home buyers or home buyers in their process, you know, be knowledgeable about this process because sometimes I know it can feel like you're, you know, left in the dark. So I'm here for you. If you guys need me, make sure you go ahead and comment down below or send me a message, do whatever you guys to do in order to reach out to me i'm definitely on instagram a lot so i'll be there as well really really appreciate each and every single one of you for watching i'm gonna catch you guys in the next video